Hi, thank you for choosing this video to watch. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how I created the setup for a previous one in which I shined some lights into a reflector and spun it and played some music. So, uh, just a brief peek. This is the bank of LEDs, and this is the reflector. And inside the reflector, there's more stuff, which I will show you right now. I wanted to cover the hole in the bottom of this reflector, so I found this pot thing. I'm not sure what it is exactly. I think it's the, the kind of uh, pot you put inside of a ceiling and put a, a light bulb in it. So I'm going to put this in, in this this stuff in here. It's a styrofoam. I really love this. this almost sunflowery kind of texture that they printed on there. And I, I spray painted it with a glitter paint. Maybe you can see that glittering. But it also, it kind of melted these little pyramids. The pyramids used to be quite sharp, but now they're a little mushy. So that's a good lesson. Don't do that. But here we go. And another problem, I mean, the, the same old problem is I have these mounting holes and spacings that don't look symmetrical or just look out of place in the illusion I'm trying to create here in this mysterious object of this, this spinning thing. So what I've decided to do is um, uh, put some kind of ring in there to cover it up. And first I thought I was going to put some felt, but I didn't like the texture. I wanted it to be reflective because I'm going to be shining a light into it and I I thought it'd be interesting to have the light reflecting off of this ring, whatever it is. So, I, uh, I designed the ring. I'll show it to you here. I, uh, I copied the size uh, exactly, and then I, I drew this, um, this Celtic knot pattern on it. And then I scanned this into the computer. The next step was to make this into a digital file that the computer can read so I can make a 3D print of it and I could cut it into acrylic on the laser cutter. So I imported it into Photoshop and then took that file and imported it into Inkscape where I can create a file that a 3D printer can read. So this 3D printer that I'm using has a pretty small bed. So I couldn't put this 12 inch disc on the bed. I couldn't print the whole thing, so I made it into five separate little segments. And I painstakingly traced the design. Then I made two separate files. One was this, which I was going to cut on the laser cutter, and then the other one was all these other separate little files, which I exported to the 3D printer. Here's Tinkercad which is a program created by Autodesk for people like me who don't want to learn all the 3D printing stuff. They just want to create a thing. So I've imported my, my, my Celtic knots into this to create a dimensionality for them. Before they were just uh, 2Ds and now they are in 3D. And this is the file that I'm exporting to the 3D printer. Okay, I just got this back from U N O. Look at that. It's amazing. It's exactly what I wanted. I guess that's the cool thing about computers. If you know what you want and you know how to tell them how to make it, then they'll just make it. And it's just what I wanted. I really like these little artifacts of the 3D printing process. I think it's going to make some really neat uh, textures. Hopefully, hopefully the, the camera will pick that up. Look, there's the flat side. And there's the bumpy side. I like the bumpy side better. Right. And for the laser cutting, I went to Omaha Maker Group, which 
has a laser cutter and it also has a 3d printer but um i i'm not as familiar with it and uno will do it for me so let's see what's going on there there's the front of the building and there it is there's there's a laser cutter so that's what i used and now you'll see me cutting with it and i decided to experiment with opacity so i bought three different sheets of acrylic and in this one you're seeing being etched right now is clear but i spray painted the back of it with this glitter paint and i also etched a clear one and I bought a black one, which is completely opaque. And the idea there is that it'll just etch a white design on the surface and no light will come through from the bottom. So I'm not going to show the etching and cutting of all of them, just this first one, just to give you an idea about the time involved. This has obviously been sped up. It took about a half an hour to etch the whole thing. But the big reveal is when I take it out into the sunlight and show... Uh, how the laser cutter leaves a little powder on the surface and rub my thumb across and there's the design. It's lovely. Yeah. So that's that one. Here's the one that's been spray painted with the glitter paint on the back. It's a little more opaque and hopefully when the light hits it just right this glitter paint will um will, will sparkle and then this last one is the the black one i think that black one's really gonna look good this is just black uh Oh, I forgot to take the paper off. <laughs> I think I'll leave the paper on, for goodness sake. Yeah, it's just black acrylic that I that I laser cut, or laser etched, just like the other ones. All right, I found this in the trash. And it looks like someone has laser cut holes in it, because the inside the holes it's all blackened. It's been laser cut, but on the underside, it, see, it looks it looks like the uh, they took a drill, and you know how drills uh, when you when you drill through, it kind of sp sp splinters out sometimes. So I don't know how they did this, but I, I liked that, and I have an idea for um, for for making a matrix of LEDs. So this is. My idea for uh, various colored LEDs, and each you know each colored pencil is a different color. So I've mapped it out so that there are about fourteen of each one, and I wanted to make sure that I had enough power to to run each one, and I would and I would operate them with a little keyboard so that not all of them came on at the same time, but only the ones that I would press. So that means they need to be separate, separately connected. So I'm going to do that, and I wanted to make sure that my math was right. So, so this is just uh, me showing my homework. Uh, these are the number of LEDs I need, the voltage drop across each LED, and the amperage that it requires. Then I used a simple formula to calculate the amount of resistance needed to make each LED shine its brightest without blowing it up. Since each color has different voltage requirements, I had to use different valued resistors for each bank in the matrix. That's why I had to do all these calculations. Uh, here are the LEDs. I just bought this whole kit because I didn't, I didn't know how many I would need, and they sent me more than I needed, so I have all these different to choose from. And luckily, they uh, they they tell me all of the information I need to know on, on the inside of the cover. So that was good to know. But I wanted to make sure, so I put them on this little breadboard, and I used the values that I calculated. But uh, turns out didn't quite work out the way I calculated. And I don't know why, but 
uh, it's good to do this experimentally because what's really important is not the math, but how it all works out. So, what you will see is, uh, what I want, this is going to be one of the first banks that I will push a button and all these should come on at the same time. So I need them, these are all different values, so I need them all to be equal brightness. So I have different resistor values for each one. White, yellow, green, red, blue. So here we go. And I'm feeding it five volts exactly. So that's pretty good. It's pretty darn good. These are way bright. I could put more resistance on these. Um, but I'll find out when I've put it all together. Maybe I want lots of white light and only a moderate amount of colored lights. And these will be spread out around the matrix so that they're not all, they won't have a rainbow like this. It'll be uh, more blended. Okay, so I, uh, I actually got pretty far with the project and I didn't film it. So I've already put this matrix inside of a case and I, uh, I actually, I'm pretty proud I made some aluminum brackets myself. Just uh, cut a strip of aluminum and bolted it on there. And this is the back, of course. And this is what the front looks like. And, uh, each one of these is kind of pointed in a different direction. You can see how I, I, I had to hot glue the smaller ones in there and uh, hot glue is covering over some of these lenses so some of them are going to be a little muted a little diffused and they're all they're all going to be pointing this way and that way so I think that's going to be an interesting effect it wasn't what I intended but um, we'll just see and if it doesn't turn out then I'll, I'll drill smaller holes that will fit exactly the right size LED if that is what I intend to do so there it is. The, the next uh, part is to take each one of these wires and connect it to a button, which will be top here. So I can just kind of play it like a little piano, and the lights will shine down into the uh, into the well. Okay, here it is, all wired up. Uh, You'll see it's all just a big tangle of wires. I actually do this on purpose because I've learned that when I've tried to fit a wire exactly to where it should be perfectly, that's when I make a big mistake and I have to cut the wire and replace it and it's a big hassle. So there's just a bunch of wires in here. And that will increase the resistance a little bit, but hopefully that's a good thing because um, what I've done is here are the buttons Here's a power bus and here's an LED driver, 12 volt, and as you saw, I uh, installed the correct value of resistors on each uh, section of the LEDs. So hopefully, all of that will work together. All that's left is to plug this in to, well actually, uh, connect this to a plug that I rescued and um, I'm just going to feed it through that hole up there and then wire these together.
I didn't show you the uh, finished back of this. It would actually be the front for me. Um, this is a salvaged on-off switch I found. And here are little buttons. And I put them uh, so that I can play them. You know, like that. So here we go. I'm gonna I'm gonna turn off all the lights so you, so it will be much more brilliant. One moment, please. And then I can also play it for you. All oh, right. How about some music? Again, I'm very grateful that you decided to stay here and watch this video. And if you want to see the performance of this, just click the link up here in the corner and it'll take you right to the spinning disc video. Thank you.